What is up, kiddos? We're back. Uh, we cleared out one branch of the Undead Settlement, and now we are ready to take on the next branch uh, of the Undead Settlement and continue making progress. In our last episode, we, we managed to... Uh, you know, I really hate when I take damage from these two guys. I really, really hate it. I mean, they're timed so perfectly that when you're killing one, the other guy comes through with his fork and stabs you. It's very irritating. Uh, I usually kill these guys no matter what, because they will follow you sometimes out the door. They're easy enough to kill. a bit annoying. Okay, so there was Fatty that we killed last time. Uh, so we're going to head this way. Uh, down there is where we killed the two little jumping guys. Uh, and then we went along that branch over there. We did that branch last time. So now we're over here on this side of it. That guy will also throw bombs. The guy with the lantern. Away here. There was an example of being just out of targeting range, which is so super annoying to me. How the ranges work in this game. This guy is stronger. He has a flamberge, which causes bleed damage. It's a pretty good sword if you're doing a bleed build. Bleed builds off of luck as one of the uh, one of the uh, stats that you would go for. Okay, this is a huge giant ambush. The thing that my helmet is pointing at right now, the crest of my helmet, that item is a fading soul. It is worth 50 souls. So basically at this point in the game, kind of worthless. And the idea is that you go and you go to try to grab it and you get ganked by a bunch of the little jumpy guys. There's one guy up there on the roof who will blow gun you and stagger you while the other guys are attacking you. There's another guy around this, this wall right here. So our strat is going to be to run to the ladder that's right there and uh, head up to the roof so all of the ambushers expose themselves. There's a guy behind us who is also uh, throwing stuff at us. Fall off the roof. And it kind of hits pretty good, so, you know, you don't want to up and grab these homework bones. Um, so our next thing is going to be to get this guy, Mr. Blowtorch. We don't want to jump off this roof just yet. Okay, so he fell. Um, because we still want to kill the guys that are out here. I think there's like three or four of them. To kill, maybe not. Two. So for your fading soul. Oh, there are three. Okay. Dune. Next, we're gonna. Oops, we're gonna climb right back up there. We're gonna be coming back this way. Actually, let's go this way first. No, let's go this way first. Nope. Let's go this way first. Pick up this worthless wooden plank shield. And talk Another to disappeared. this creepy. The grand and carry the cage. He ever has his cage. And Nana's never coming back. So come into the cage and become Nana's shade. Yeah. So uh, creepy for sure. Now, if you talk to him and come back up here, you could 
come onto this side of this little house and drop down and there will be a cage carrier here who does not aggro on you. Um, you can examine the cage and it will put you inside the cage and take you to the mound makers where Hodrick is and you can join the mound makers covenant uh, the mound makers basically are the ones that make you the purple invaders and you can invade other people's games and you can help them and help them kill the enemies that they're confronting or you can be an enemy of them and kill them I never they do have to be summoned though so I never summon the mound makers because they cannot they can't they cannot help just kill you and uh, there's so many trolls that will um, join the mound makers with the sole intent of turning in the middle of a fight when it is most desperate and killing you. So, um, if that's your jam, you want that kind of uh, that kind of excitement in your life, hey, knock yourself out. Come to the top of this bridge, throw a bomb. Ah! Almost fell. Whew. Terrible. Um, blow up those guys. So there's a dude down here. There's another dude around the corner with a rake. We are actually going to jump down there and we're going to grab... Uh, we're going to grab a bonfire. That's right. Behind us over there. Fourth Titanite Shard, which will allow us to level our weapon up to plus T. Woot woot. And we'll come and grab this bonfire. And we can take a rest, get our two flasks that we used back. Come out here, take a right. Curl around this post. And up here are some baddies. This is where your thrusting weapon is quite nice. Um, quite hard enough to kill him in one. Another example of the targeting issues of Dark Souls 3. Alright, we're going to talk to this guy. Um, he is a pyromancer, so go through his dialogue and he will go back to the shrine to help you out. Oh my gosh. We are going to be getting a pyromancy or two from him because they're kind of fun. We are going to need to get our intelligence or faith up to 10 though for the one that we want. Uh, this guy with his big old bowl has a. Uh, doesn't really stagger that much, so... Power through. We're gonna come up and grab this soul packet, head down this little bridge. And we're gonna be getting the fire clutch ring here. The fire clutch ring, if you are pyromancy, this whole little area is like pyromancy central if you want to be a pyromancer. Uh, the fire clutch rings will make your pyromancies hit uh, much harder. Which is a good thing if you're a pyromancer. So, now these guys, uh, if you kill them, they don't give you any souls. So they're not even worth killing, really. They're just sort of... just sort of there and pathetic. Now, Fat Lady here should have pathed by now. I don't know what has caused her to derp out right there. She should be way down there by now. Maybe if I kill this other one, she will path. We don't want to have to fight her there. It's kind of cramped. But if 
she's going to derp out there. Let's see what happens if we put an arrow in her gob. Well, that was nice. Did she die? She did not. So she's going to be in our way a little bit later. So come off here. You're going to take a little hit to your health. Um, we're going to run in here. Pass the dog. Just step off. And just kill the doggo. They're going to be rats. The most irritating thing about the rats is... Um, unfortunately, I kick instead of swarming my rat. Is that they... Uh, around you. Get the Kaistus. It's a fist weapon. Parry with it. Punch people in the dome. Well, here's a big rat. So, you know, they will coordinate their attacks. And grab the blood by ring. So, we might as well go put that on since we got some room for rings now. Uh, the blood bite ring will will help um, delay build up of bleed. We come out here. We're gonna open this door, and this is the dilapidated bridge bonfire. So that's where we walked through in our last episode and murdered Hodrick, or had the giant murder Hodrick for us. We will be going that way when it's time for the boss, but it is not just yet. Um, so that key we purchased at the Firelink Shrine opens this gate, the Grave Key. So we're going to head on down here. Now I also mentioned last episode that you could heal your... You could reverse your hollowing to make yourself up here in a normal state again. You can do that here by um, trying to dissipate your curse. Um, it ain't worth it for us because we're wearing a helmet, so we don't really care. If you upset, let's say you accidentally hit an NPC and you didn't want to, you can request absolution here and it will reset the NPC to be on your side. So if that ever happens, um, like accidentally, you set down your PS4 controller uh, and it does a hit, that is a way to reverse that. The red-hilted halberd that we just picked up, um, if you don't know what a halberd is, a halberd is basically a big old long pole with a blade on the end and a spear on the top so you can sweep with it to do blade damage or you can um, or you can poke with it um, I always get turned around in here it's like I, don't, I forget which way I came from I think it came from that way of the skeletons rising from their graves. You can hear them getting up. We're going to come out here and we're going to make a, a, a right turn. And we want this thing. So it's kind of tricky to get this thing because he runs real fast. By the time you get there, sometimes you're out of stamina. But he gives you a heavy gem. Heavy gem converts your scaling to strength scaling as opposed to. Um, and here's another tiny shark. Strength scaling as opposed to whatever the scaling of the weapon is. So run there. Batty will jump down and hurt himself. Pull out his thing here. No, 
another Titanite Shard. And Fatty was standing over here, wasn't she? We're going to take care of her. I'm going to use my focus points. Oh, I used the wrong arrow. That did no damage from that range. <laughs> will hit you with the book as well. You can backstab them. A little bit tricky to get the backstab window on these guys. So she's doing. Now there's a worthless item up here, a shield. Um, but it's 100% walkthrough, so we're getting all the stuff. The blessed shield. So you'll see the physical damage is almost non-existent. And it blocks more magic, but not much from what we've got. We have 51, it blocks 55. It blocks a little more lightning, but not much. It's just a downgrade in every possible way. But it's plus one, so, you know, whatever that means. It is much lighter, but... For our adventure, worthless. All right, you ready for some rats? Uh, there's going to be a lot of them. They will coordinate their, their nonsense. Just use those big old wide swings of our longsword. Get rid of them. St. Talisman's a pretty good talisman. Uh, if you're running a Miracles build, Miracles are a different type of spell that scales off of Faith instead of Intelligence. And over here, we're going to be getting an NPC uh, who, who will go back to uh, the Firelink Shrine if we touch her um, oh, and help us yes, out. Yes, there you are. Let me pray. So we're going to talk to her and accept her service. Oh, I, you have it. And oh, she is I going shall. to be a source of miracles. We're not going to use any miracles, but um, if you are doing a miracle build, she is going to be important. Mm, well, we'll talk to this. Uh, this guy is uh, Mr. Bitter. Now this uh, body was what we knocked down, I believe, from up there. And you can get the flame stone plate ring. What that does is um, it increases the amount of fire damage you can take. So we're not going to really be taking any fire damage, so we don't really need that. Um... So we do want to pull these dudes one at a time, because there's some stuff that we're going to want over there. Hit you in the head. And they will throw those balls, by the way. Um, like that. And then pull out their big old weapon. The balls do hit pretty hard. Quite angry with us. Go ahead. Grab that guy too. There's another guy around the corner over there. He's not a difficult enemy, but he just makes this fight harder because we're trying to dodge Mr. Big Guy with his lumberjack saw. Trying to knock him off the edge. And with these guys, I am always greedy. And I will take so much more damage than I need to. So you saw just how much of my health vanished on that that proc uh, of bleed. So because I am impatient. That's what caused that to happen. So we're going to come over here, come around the corner, grab that, and there are some more of those alluring skulls around this corner.
which we will need later in the game. And you don't want to run out of them. Here's this dude. Okay, now, just to orient yourself, um, and to grab this ember, that's where we dropped down from the bonfire. This is where we uh, shot the old lady, the fat lady off the roof. Um, that was the region we were just in, collecting the titanite shards, and this is the little area that had the rats. So we've worked our way all the way around. Not quite ready yet to hit a bonfire. We're going to be getting another bonfire because there's another branch that we're going to have to do over here. So we're going to come out. And this is a little bit out of order. You're really not meant to come down here yet. Um, but we're going to. And up will come Sigvard of Katarina. So, yeah, he's a little bit, he's a little bit funny. Hmm. 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 And you just talk to him, and he tells you that he can't figure out how the elevators work. And just go through his dialogue. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down the elevator. Come out down here, and like I say, you're not really meant to come here yet, but it makes a lot of sense to do this right now. There is an extremely difficult enemy here that we are going to run past. We are going to grab our iframes on the door. through and we're going to grab this just in case bad things happen to us uh, here on out. We get our Estes back and um, this guy cannot come out the door. So we are going to just pin cushion him. I'll let my stamina build back up. I hope I keep pushing the wrong button. Gosh darn it. And I'm going to use my focus points here. Because that'll make my arrows hit harder. So, uh, what he is doing is frost damage. Um, if you get frost bitten, as we saw with the board, you will uh, be incredibly slow, and your stamina will be very slow to reload. And he is incredibly fast. So, uh, at this point, you will most likely die to him. And why die when there is no need to die? You can get the Irithyll Straight Sword. A lot of people really like... Oh, uh, he, doesn't re he doesn't come back, so we can go ahead and get our flask that we just wasted back. Um, the Irithyll Straight Sword... Uh, where is it? Where did it go? Here it is. So, um, it's okay. Um, it does more physical damage than the sword that we have right now. But, um, it also does frost damage. 55, so if you, especially if you are into PvP and you don't want people to be using their endurance, it can help. If you can apply the frost proc. With all of the weapons, when you see them with bosses or mini-bosses using the weapon, it is never, uh, it never hits as hard for you when you have it. The boss weapons that you acquire never hit as hard. So we are on our way to get a very important ring that's going to fill out our ring panoply for a little while here. So you'll notice that Siegvard is gone. So what you do is you just send this elevator down. So when we went down the elevator, this elevator came down from up above. And then Siegvard went up above. Hmm. We're going to be going there in just a minute. First, we're going to come around here, get that soul packet. We're going to come around. 
up to this tower, and this is where the giant is who is shooting the arrows. So you can see all the arrows he has sitting there. Ooh. And we're going to make I, peace with him. Here's your I, young white branch. And anywhere you see white trees, he will shoot in that vicinity. So, uh, not down here, but he's shooting way over there. So you can see the bridge, and you can see uh, that's where we're going to be ultimately going to fight the boss. But you can see the, the tree right there where my helm is pointing, the crest of my helm. Uh, that's the white tree that he was shooting at. And in there, in that region, is where we killed Hodrick. Or actually, he killed Hodrick for us. So now he will help us out. You can kill him, and it gives you a ring which makes your uh, arrows fly farther. And I believe hit harder as well. Hmm. So as soon as you hear the hmm, you roll off the elevator and come out this side. And here's Sigurd. So you talk to him. We're going to need his quest, his NPC quest chain to advance. Um, so, uh, to make sure that Grey Rat doesn't die. Okay, so we're going to come down here. Go ahead and grab the Homeward Bones right here, Homeward Bone. And there is an old stray demon that's just kind of wandering around over here. And he will see you and he will come up to no. here. Seagward will be upset. It's too late now. Um, just start doing a number on him. Jump mid swing there. We don't want to waste. Uh, we don't want to really waste. Our Estus. It's a rage mode. So we just go ahead and kill him. He will give us a fire gem. So we can make a weapon a fire weapon. And then here he is. That was quite a performance. Yes, it was. He gives you the seat brow. Uh, you can get two of those. And you can turn one in and get the helm of... Solaire, if, if you're a fan. And uh, another one in for the rest of his, or for at least, I think it's his chest plate. I don't think there's any kind of armor set with legs and all that. It's just a chest. Might be. Chest. I, I never get it. Um, it's it's kind of an annoyance to have to go up to the crows, but if you want to, chop this guy down, grab the pale tongue. The pale tongues are very important. We're going to be able to get three in the, our game. Pale Tongues. Northern Helm is the Viking gear. Um, the Pale Tongue allows you to um, respec your character. So if you've at, uh, misattributed your stats, if that's even a word, um, you can set it all back down to zero and start over again. So a lot of people who want to play uh, sorcerer builds will um, these guys are going to jump down. Here he um, you want to play sorcerer? Sorcerers are incredibly difficult at the beginning of the game. Is it this guy? There's two that jump down. Um, early game, they're very hard. So what people will do is they'll come through and they'll play you know, a regular build, get the Pale Tongue, and then when you're a little bit stronger, they'll come out and respec to be a sorcerer. So there should be a couple dogs. Eliminate them from our laugh. There's another dog here. We want him to come out. Because the last thing we want is him interfering with our life here. There are four in this, uh, 
So, of course, you wouldn't know that unless you've gotten hit by them. If you open that chest uh, and they're up there, all four of them will drop at the same time. Round is sound on the chain. So human pine resin will put poison on your on your weapon. Okay. Now we are going to try to kill uh, this fat lady from here. Oops. And if you angle properly, she will cast her gnaw into those barrels. But you can thread the needle here and get her. Uh oh, she walked behind the other lady. So headshots are what we want. Because uh, one lady's fine, two of them become... Oh, she turned around. Two of them become a bit of an annoyance. An annoyance that usually leads to death. the arrow and I had to realize because we're using uh, your, your arrow. You can't um, the bleed proc and die. Nothing. That was kind of raw, I gotta say. Alright. So we're gonna head up here. I know this episode's a little bit on the longer side. We're over 30 minutes, but all this stuff kind of fits together. Get Flynn's Ring. Flynn's Ring will make you hit harder the less, uh, the less stuff you wear. You'll want to top off a bit. Save a flask, at least one. Come get these homeward bones. Come in here, and it's a little bit of a tricky jump. If you miss a jump, you'll quite possibly die. You want to be running and just follow the light and jump off and aim for that light where my helmet is pointing against the wall. Um, so you come over here and you kind of curve around. And you will land here so you won't lose all your health. And that's what we wanted, the Chloranthy Ring. The Mirror Vest and Trousers. That's all that's here, um, just to show you where we are. We are going to be opening up that door in our next episode. And this is... Uh, there's the bridge that we knocked the fat lady off. Um, that's the little area where we killed the fire-throwing guys. Um... So, uh, we're going to Homeward Bone back to the Shrine because we have enough souls to level and we have enough Titanite to upgrade our weapon another level. So, we're going to want to do both of those things. So, we'll start in with that in our next episode. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.